Well, hello everyone and welcome to Pedro Plays and our Football Manager series. Uh, we are now up to episode 10. Can you believe it? We're in double digits. And we're currently playing through uh, our Gillingham uh, Football Manager save. Uh, so keep watching uh, to find out how we got on in the last few games. Okay, so you may remember in the last episode, uh, we unfortunately went out of the FA Cup in the first round against Coventry. Uh, we did lose that one 1-0 one in the end. And um, it was a little bit disappointing, to be honest, to, to get out of the FA Cup. But we're looking forward. Uh, we're going to see if we can improve it in the league and uh, see where that takes us. And uh, obviously still in the Czech Trade Trophy as well. Um, so it's the only cup competition we're now in. Um, so we're going to pay a bit more attention to that. That's actually going to be the live game in this episode where we play... Uh, Newport County in the uh, Czech Trade Trophy South second round. Um, so let's have a look at how we got on in the last three games then. Um, so you can see from this we had a um, mixed bag of results, but uh, overall it was uh, it was quite positive. And the first game uh, was against Walsall. Uh, so let's jump forward to that. Just before we start looking at the, uh, the goals, if you like, from this game, uh, we did have some community feedback. Uh, actually with regards to uh, this man here Cody McDonald uh, so yeah it was picked up uh, by the community that actually he was on a bit of a goal scoring streak actually and he'd been overlooked by myself uh, a few times in the last uh, last few games now um, Cody McDonald had uh, you know when he scores goals actually he's, he's fantastic uh, but he'd been overlooked a little bit because actually you know he had a few games his ratings had really really dropped um, and I'm sort of mixing it around a little bit with some of the other attackers. But I thought in this episode um, I would give him uh, a little bit of more of a run out, um, perhaps get him starting a few games. Uh, so I started him uh, right off the back, uh, right off the bat, sorry, in Gillingham uh, versus Walsall, the away game. Uh, and you can see, look, after 10 minutes, our first goal, he does uh, pop up and he manages to score it. Now you've got Wagstaff that on the right hand side puts in a brilliant ball. Cody McDonald gets on the end of it with his foot and then tucks it away. Uh, so at that point it was 1 0. That was his seventh goal of the season, which I, I've got a feeling may put him up towards uh, being one of the, uh, the top goal scorers. Now on the 33rd minute we did get a uh, penalty uh, and Zelalem stepped up. And you can see Rory Donnelly's not playing, who'd recently absolutely fluffed the penalty for us. So Zelalem. Um, very much glad that he's back in the picture and taking penalties again uh, and that was a brilliant penalty there uh, and then on the uh, 40th minute uh, Scott Wagstaff who got the assist for the Cody McDonald goal um, he pops up with a goal here great ball in from Koncheski uh, from a deep area Wagstaff clear at the back post uh, and then a great finish um, to make it 3-0 at this stage and we were very much running away with it uh, really really pleased um, with the way that we were playing now tactically uh, I did switch that attacking uh, mentality also changed the, the player role as well for Code McDonald made him an advance forward instead of a target man which is what a uh, sort of new blow was kind of playing um, so yeah just changed the player role a little bit and obviously it play, paid dividends in this game um, also did get a couple of goals though uh, towards the end of the game which made it a little bit of a nervous finish uh, we've got Baba Yarko um, plays it to Musa and then Musa scores this one. Now, I must admit, I was a little bit disappointed with the uh, with the goalkeeper in this. Um, you know, if we watch this goal again, I don't really know what the goalkeeper was doing. Um, but I was certainly could have done a lot more um, to prevent this. He does hit it from a long way out. It's not really going that fast. And it just seems to go over his arm, um, or under his arm, sorry. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that wasn't the, the best um, moment from Jonathan Bond, our goalkeeper. Then on the 80th minute, uh, to leave it with a little bit of a nervous finish, Babiarco breaks through the middle um, and then manages to score. Now, with this attacking men mentality, we are aware actually that we are quite vulnerable to, to sort of breaks like that. It wasn't a massive surprise. Um, but, you know, ultimately our attackers um, have won it for us and that finished uh, the game 3 2. And um, yeah, shots right up to uh, to second in the table. The second game we played uh, Oxford United, uh, and this was a second versus uh, third um, fixture. Actually, actually, I made a mistake. Actually, we we were up to third in the table, so Oxford was second, we were third. Um, but um, this was second versus third, and uh, I kept the the same lineup for this one as the as the previous games. I thought the players did did quite well against Warsaw, aside from the last you know sort of few minutes. 
um, actually we dominated that game um, we did play relatively well in this game it was a, a very quiet first half not too many chances uh, as you can see though we, we had a large amount of possession and um, getting away quite a few good shots on there uh, and shots on target now in the 55th minute we did take a 1-0 lead um, through Christian Bielek it was actually a corner that Zellem crossed in gets flicked on and then uh, Bielek um, slots it in with his foot that was his first goal of the season for us and, and he's played quite well in this episode I must admit as he's come back from sort of a, a few niggling injuries um, now on the 79th minute uh, Oxford did uh, unfortunately equalise again pretty much from a set piece and uh, and once again if we if we look back at this um, you know I really thought Jonathan Bond our goalkeeper could have done a little bit more uh, you may see that he literally just just lets it go past him uh, look at this just stands there and watches it and um, doesn't really make much of an attempt to go for the ball so uh, again it was a little bit a little bit disappointing from him he is a good goalkeeper uh, but obviously in the last two games he's um, let goals in which you know I feel he could have saved so in our third and most recent game we played Rochdale uh, Rochdale had just lost their manager um, so they were currently managerless when we played them and uh, they were 22nd uh, in the table and uh, I did change the formation uh, around a little bit uh, just through fatigue uh, I did start with Cody McDonald again uh, the fan favourite started with him up front um, and uh, kept Wagstaff he's um, also got a couple of assists actually um, quite recently so kept him um, on the right hand side but changed the midfield a little bit just freshen it up uh, and also the defence as well um, just a couple of minor changes there uh, so let's just see how we got on in this game it was an absolutely uh, action packed game actually 4-2 it ended up finishing up you can see we got so many yellow cards and, and even a red card which we'll have a look at in a minute um, so it was quite a feisty affair it was our first um, home game of this episode um, got off to a really good start on the 5th minute uh, Frank Nubley who actually switched over onto the left hand side um, ends up getting a goal here um, so you can see sort of how that appears so Bradley Dapp, good stop Wagstaff whips it back in and then Nubley um, gets on the end of it there really to you know, slot it into a half open goal um, so that was 1-0 so it's a really good start we did then get a second uh, via Cody McDonald he's an absolute beast of form at the minute not gets the ball to Dak, Dak slots it to McDonald and then he coolly slots it in um, so that was 2-0 uh, to us and I thought we were going to run away with it at that point unfortunately though, 10 minutes later Rochdale did get a first goal again Henson finding space uh, and then manages to slot it in that's from um, from a set piece um, he scored that um, so that made it 2-1 and then um, it was a little bit of a, a dry period till just after half time uh, when they managed to get an equaliser to make it at 2-2 I was a little bit fuming to be honest with you by this point we could have ran away with the game and you know they've they've brought themselves right back in the game and it's 2-2 and I thought you know I could really see us actually going on and losing the game the momentum was with Rochdale um, but we did well we did well to, to bring it back on 76 minutes um, 76 minutes sorry Cody McDonald uh, again comes up and manages to score again Wagstaff crosses it in McDonald with his head this time and um, gets the ball into the back of the net that's his ninth goal of the season so uh, I'm almost certain now that he's definitely our top goal scorer um, of this this season so far um, then on the 82nd minute we did get a player sent off this was for a second uh, yellow card uh, obviously a bit of a blatant one really just trips him up as he's um, running off so it did leave us down to 10 men um, managed to bring on another right back I think um, Osilaja we slotted in at right back um, just to, to shore up the defence a little bit uh, but on the uh, 91st minute didn't really matter um, Zelalem did step up for a penalty now just before he takes it um, you know let's look at this here Cody McDonald was on a hat trick um, but you know a bit greedy from Zelalem isn't it Cody McDonald's on a hat trick, 91st minute. Surely you'd let him take it, but nope. Zellalem steps up and scores anyway. Um, but never mind. Uh, it was good to see uh, Zellalem uh, getting on the score sheet. Two assists from Wagstaff, two goals from Cody McDonald as well, um, and that finished 4-2. Um, so really pleased with the overall outcome in that one. Was a little bit nervy for for a moment there, um, but glad that we managed to um, to hold off the fight back from uh, from Rochdale. Um, so let's have a little look at the table before we go through to our last um, last game and our live game uh, today. So you can see that we are currently in fifth. 
um, but it's really close at the top. Um, we are on 37 points. Um, both first and second Peterborough and Oxford are on 38 points. Um, goal difference, there's not a huge amount on it. We're on 10, Oxford are on 11. Bolton seem to be doing quite well with their goal difference, that plus 18. Um, so it is really, really close at this stage in the season. Obviously, it's still got a long way to go. Uh, definitely up there or thereabouts. Um, you know, it's quite a big difference once you sort of get down to the top seven, there's then the big difference of, you know, sort of seven points from eighth place. Um, so we are sort of in the, the chasing pack there, chasing Peterborough and Oxford. Um, but yeah, we'll see Christmas is normally, you know, a defining point of the season when, you know, the teams that are up towards the top of the table around Christmas time usually um, stay there, you know, to the end of the season. However, for Gillingham, that wasn't so last season. Uh, it ended up, you know, I think it was top at Christmas and then, you know, our demise came from January right to the end of the season where we lost a heck of a lot of games and ended up finishing, you know, I think it was 8th or ninth last season. So um, so hopefully that doesn't happen to us in, in, in this save. Um, otherwise, you know, we'll be floating above the relegation zone probably. Um, but yeah, pleased with how things are going in the league. So in this game, we're now going to change our focus as we play at Newport County. Um, let's have a look at where not, um, sorry, Newport County are. Uh, so currently in League 2. And they are mid-table, really, in League 2. So, you know, we do stand a good chance. They're not sort of fighting right at the top of League 2. Obviously, a division below us. So, uh, I would expect us to um, to win this one. Now, I'm going to place a little bit more um, emphasis on this. Although, I'm still going to give a few of the fringe players a little bit of a chance. Um, but just making sure that, you know, I'm not putting, you know, totally second string out. Um, but, yeah. Let me um, set up the team. We'll come back for the lineups. Okay, so here are the uh, the lineup uh, to face Newport County um, in the Checker Trade Trophy. As you can see, I made a few changes. Uh, first one is being Stuart Nelson. Um, he is our first choice goalkeeper in real life, um, but I have put him um, back in goal. Um, he's being um, sort of ousted really by Jonathan Bond in the the league um, on our Football Manager save. Um, but like I say, he's first choice in real life. Uh, Ryan Jackson, I've got right back. Um, I've got Anthony Gerrard coming back in. He has um, been recovering from injury, uh, so he's now back in. Uh, Bradley Garmerson on the left hand side, giving Koncheski uh, a little bit of a rest. Um, midfield got Jake, um, so Josh Wright back in and Jake Hessenthaler. Uh, Jake Hessenthaler again has not played an awful lot this season, so giving him a run out. Uh, midfield very strong, um, sort of attacking midfield and attacker. Sorry, um, so you've got J Emmanuel Thomas on the right hand side. Uh, Bradley Dack, obviously one of our leading players in the centre, and Billy Knott, who's played um, pretty well actually over the last last few games, is uh, going to this left hand side. Uh, and then of course you've got Cody McDonald. Uh, leading the top, hopefully going to get us a couple of goals. Now, I do aim to to maybe give him a little bit of rest if we um if we are leading uh, around about the 60th, 60th minute. So let's see how we uh, how we get on against Newport County. Here we go then. Kick off at the Priestfield Stadium. So we are at home for this game. Um, team very much in good shape. So aside from Anthony Gerrard, who's um you know he's a, a little bit unfit, um not too match sharp uh, due to recent injuries, um, but still you know absolutely fine for this game. So let's see how we uh, how we get on against Newport County. I'm hoping, you know, for for a, a you know a decent win. I'm thinking maybe two, two to three nil. Um, you know, knowing our defence, though, they may well get a goal. Um, but yeah, that's my prediction. I'm going to say let's say three one is going to be my prediction. It's a relatively quiet start to the game. I'm hoping it's not quite start for the uh, for the live games. Um, you know, hopefully we get some get some goals. And hopefully it doesn't, you know, fit with the normal trend that seems to be happening recently where we end the episode on a loss. I'm hoping that we're going to turn that around um, in this, this game, in this episode. Looks like we're passing the ball around quite well. We get a chance here. Barely not. McDonald. Oh, there we go. It had to be that man, didn't it? Cody McDonald. Tenth goal of the season. And uh, gives us a 1-0 lead um, on the 25th minute. And um, yeah, great build-up play actually. It's playing quite well. Not what picks out McDonald, and uh, you know, I thought it was a small chance of him being offside there, but you know, assistance not giving it. So one nil. Happy days. Can we build on this now? Okay, looks like we're going to get another chance here. Plays it to Dak. Can he get a long shot in? Oh, oh, just misses. Great build-up play though. I really did think he was going to uh, going to score that one. 
So at half time then, not not a bad first half, not the best, but you know, if we carry on in that vein, I'm, I'm pretty certain that we will get get a victory here. Here we go then, start of the second half at the Priestfield Stadium, one nil to us so far. Let's see if we can build on that in the second second half. I do anticipate them scoring, um, so I'd like to um, to get an extra goal. Really, you know, our defence has not been too great this season so far, so. Um, another goal would, would give us a little bit of security. Hopefully, um, see us, you know, sort of um, roll this game out and, you know, hopefully get away with a win here. Okay, so we're on 70 minutes. Going to make a, a couple of changes. Don't want to change it too drastically because we're only winning 1 0. Um, but I'm going to bring J. Emmanuel Thomas off. I'm going to bring uh, Elliot List on, actually, and to give him uh, a little bit of a run around. And then got Ryan Jackson here. He's not really playing that well. I don't know really though who I can switch him with. I don't think I've got any natural right backs on there. Um, Bradley Garmston also not playing well. Yeah, let's change him actually and then let's bring uh, Max Aimer on um, as a centre back. Yeah, let's, let's give that a go. Let's see, see what happens, see how they get on. So Elliot List is a, uh, a young player at Gillingham, a bit of a hot prospect um, at the moment. A uh, very fast player and, and quite skillful. So, yeah, let's get, get him on and see what he can do. did uh, feature a little bit earlier on, actually, in this series. And, you know, and did come on, has played um, relatively all right. He's played, you know, he's had a good couple of games. He's had a couple of games where he's not done an awful lot. Um, but he's certainly one to watch for the future. So coming up to the end of the game here. Can we hang on for the last couple of minutes? To be fair, they've not really troubled us. Um, it has been mostly us um, in this game. So this will probably be the end of it quite soon. Gerard's had a good game. Rate 7. Bailey Cargill though, rated 8. Probably a player of the match. This is surely the end of it, the last kick. Nope, not quite. Oh, there we go. Full time at the Priestfield Stadium, 1-0. And that does mean that we have an episode where we are unbeaten. Uh, how about that? So four games, uh, one free and drawn one. It also means that we progress in the Checker Trade Trophy. Can we go all the way uh, to win it? Not the biggest cup competition in the world, um, but it would um, be our first piece of silverware um, in this in this uh, series and uh, on this channel and football manager so can we go all the way and win it let's hope we do now um it does leave us actually to uh come up with our player uh, of the week who is going to be our player of the week now i think there really only can be one winner now worth for mention before we go on to the winner of the player of the week is scott bagstaff you know he's done really really well in this episode um he obviously got the goal uh but um he has you know come up with quite a few assists actually uh, so I'm very very pleased with him he's definitely in with a run in uh, but it can only go to one man it's got to be this man here Cody McDonald um, you know he was uh, you know uh, he is a fan favourite should I say you know the fans wanted him back uh, you guys wanted him back and playing um, and he's proved himself he's got you know a fair few goals um, in this episode and you know cements his place as our top goal scorer um, so definitely going to be picking him uh, I think in the uh, the coming games now we are approaching the transfer window remember Bradley Dak could well be on his way out soon um, so if you do want to uh, see how we get on and how this season progresses uh, do make sure uh, you subscribe to the channel if you've not already and do make sure that you hit like if you enjoyed this video uh, make sure you leave your comments in the section below uh, do you agree with Cody McDonald being uh, placed back in the side um, is there anyone else that you'd like to see uh, including the side that maybe I've overlooked uh, but thank you for watching guys and take care